Yay! Yay! Okay, let's revisit our rocket, our maybe ping pong rocket or whatever, but let's be a little bit more careful with how we do it with the changing mass, because that's the problem, is that when you have a rocket, um, the mass of the rocket is changing over time as you uh, expel the fuel out the back as exhaust. So we have to take that into account. Um, and so uh, things get just a little more complicated. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Suppose, um, in general, I mean, the rocket doesn't have to start off with rest. We could be looking at this from, you know, some point of view after the rocket's already started. So uh, initially, I've got a rocket of mass M moving with a speed V, right? The v could be zero. Maybe it starts from rest. But anyway, this just in general, it could be moving at some speed. And then an instant of time later, what happens is that I've got a little bit of mass, dm in the calculus sense, a little bit of mass comes out uh, the back, um, and this moves with a speed relative to the rocket. Let's be careful. This moves with a speed V exhaust, let's call it, relative to the rocket. And then what's the rocket's mass? Well, now the rocket's mass is M minus dm, right? And the speed then has increased a little bit, V plus, let's call it dV, a little bit. Of speed change. Okay, so what we're going to do is be a little bit more careful about how all this works. Now, it's still true that momentum is conserved, right? So it's still true that mv at the beginning is the same as the total momentum of the system an instant of time later. Okay, in an instant of time later, uh, what have I got? I've got uh, m minus dm, that's my new mass of the rocket. It's going at a speed v plus dv. Um, but then I have to take into account the thing going the other direction, right? The little bit of mass going the other way. And so this is going to be, I always add momenta together. And so this is going to be uh, dm times. Um, now I have to be even more careful right? Um, that V exhaust, that's relative to the rocket. But in the frame of me looking at the rocket, I have to be careful. That That's going to be the speed of dm that I see. And now, okay, let's take a couple of situations into account. If the rocket isn't moving at all, let's suppose the rocket's speed is zero, then the speed of dm coming out the back really is just V exhaust, right? That's what I would see. If the rocket is moving though, and take the easy example, suppose the rocket is moving exactly as fast to the right as the exhaust is coming out to the left, then relative to me, I see the exhaust just coming out and not moving at all, right? The relative speed to me is zero. So the right thing to put in here is gonna be the speed of the rocket minus the speed of the exhaust, because, and, and think about it even more, suppose the rocket's going even faster. Um, it might be that the speed of the rocket is greater than the speed of the exhaust. So relative to me, the exhaust is going forward, right? Relative to the rocket, it's always going backwards at that same speed. So the use in doing this is that V exhaust, that's always going to be a constant. Even though the speed of the rocket is changing, the speed of the exhaust relative to the rocket is always staying the same. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um, Okay, and then we have to do one more thing. We have to be even more careful. I mean, all this is true. Um, but if we're going to integrate that dm, it's not just a little bit of mass, right? In the calculus sense, um, that dm is a change of mass. It's a rate of change of the mass uh, of the rocket. So dm... is negative because that's not just a positive mass that's the change of the mass of the system and so that's going to be less than zero i'm losing mass right dm uh, just think about it this way the mass of the rocket the dm dt of the rocket is going to be less than zero in a calculus sense right that's going to be negative because the rate of change is negative i'm losing mass so dm is actually less than zero so what i have to do if i'm going to use this um, in an integral what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to change the signs um, in my equation. 
So MV is going to be M plus DM, where now my DM is less than zero, because that'll give me the same thing, right? And then this is going to be V plus DV. And then I'm going to have a minus DM. I'm just basically switching signs on DM. V minus V exhaust. Okay, and then I should be set up right. That DM DT is now less than zero. Uh, okay, so I've got MV. Let's write out all these terms. I'm going to have on the right, I'm just going to foil that thing out. I'm going to have an MV plus uh, MDV plus VDM plus DMDV. Uh, and then I'm going to have a minus VDM. And I'm going to have, oh, minus minus is plus. V exhaust DM. Okay, uh, well, let's look at all this. Um, first of all, these two cross out because they're on opposite sides of the equation. Um, I've got a VDM and another VDM, one's plus and one's minus, so those cancel. So it looks like I have zero is MDV. Uh, what about this term? Well, those are infinitesimal quantities, right? And when I multiply them together, um, in a calculus sense, those are gonna go to zero. So if I multiply them together, uh, there's that the product is certainly going to zero. I don't have to worry about that. Um, and let's see, the only other term I've got is plus V exhaust DM. All right, so what I've got is, on one side of the equation, let me get my my dv on one side, and then I'm going to have uh, v exhaust here, and then I'm going to have dm over m on the other side. Remember that m is changing, so um, those two I'd like to, to put together because now I can integrate both sides. So this is just going to be the integral of dv from like some v initial to v final. And this is going to be, oops, I got a minus, don't I? I forgot my minus sign. Minus V, yeah, because that's just a constant. Uh, the way we had set it up, the, the, the exhaust speed is always a constant relative to the rocket. That never changes. Uh, and then this is going to be from some initial mass of the rocket to the final mass of the rocket, which is always going to be less because we're expelling fuel. Uh, and this is going to be dm over m. Okay. So let's see if we remember these. Well, the integral on the left-hand side, that's going to be super easy. Uh, the integral of dv is just, well, that's just v final minus v initial, right? That's just going to be our delta v. That's the speed change of the rocket. Um, maybe from zero up to some final value. And then over here, I've got minus v dx, exhaust speed. Uh, what is the integral of dm over m? Um, well, that's not too bad. That's just the natural log of m. So this is the natural log uh, of m final minus, putting in the limits, right? Natural log of m uh, initial. There we go. Um, but remember, logs have really cool properties. If I take the difference of two logs, I can also write it like this. Yep. Let's write it up here. So delta v is going to be minus v e x uh, and then this is going to be natural log of let's see that would be m final over m initial All right uh, and then i can do one more log trick and the other log trick is that i can bring the negative sign inside the log and that will flip the fraction right that's going to meet so finally i have this delta v is the exhaust speed times the natural log of m initial over m final, just the ratio of the beginning mass to the end mass of the rocket after it's used up all its fuel. And there we go. This is called the rocket equation. So this tells you if you know the ratio of the mass of the rocket initially and finally, um, you can calculate the final speed of the rocket. Um, and if you know the, the speed of the exhaust, right, because that's something that you can sort of tune um, well, let's figure out for a ping pong rocket now let's that we just did before now let's do it right okay so what we had was m initial oops uh, 
Uh, initially, we said it was 200 kilograms before, and then we fired a bunch of ping pong, 100 kilograms worth of ping pong balls off the rocket, and this was going to be, uh, finally, I have 100 kilograms, right? So, uh, and my V, my exhaust, right, is just the ping pong ball speed, and this was 20 meters per second for each ping pong ball. Okay, so the speed of the cart is just going to be 20 times the natural log of that ratio, the initial to final. Uh, and the mass changed by a factor of two. And so if you do this, what you wind up with, 20 times natural log of two, uh, you wind up with, uh, what did I get? 13.9. So sure enough, we estimated before um, just taking the, the, the limits of the mass not changing and then all of the mass changing immediately. Uh, we said that the answer should be between 10 and 20 meters per second. Um, and sure enough, it's right between 10 and 20 meters per second, 13.9. It's not exactly in the middle, but that's because the natural log, it's not linear. The natural log is, is, a, is a more complicated shape than a straight line. Um, let's say... So now you can do, once you know the rocket equation, you can do some kind of interesting things. Um, is it possible for the cart to go 100 meters per second? Um, yeah, that's possible. Um, it, it, you might think maybe naively that the rocket, uh, our, our, our cart can't go any faster than the speed with which I eject ping pong balls out the back. But that's not right. I, I keep giving it, even though um, the, the ping pong ball speed is 20 meters per second all the time, I keep giving a little bit of impulse to the uh, cart going forward. And so I can keep accelerating the cart. Um, so yeah, even though the ping pong balls only go 20, uh, I can make the cart go 100. Um, so let's figure that out. If I want the cart to go 100, what does the ratio of the masses have to be? Um, it's kind of an interesting answer. Uh, if v, If delta V is 100 meters per second, uh, then that's going to be 100 on the left-hand side. The right-hand side, I get 100 equals 20 times a ratio of the masses. Uh, so that's just going to be 5, right? 100 divided by 20 is 5. So this number turns out to be, uh, let's see, what did I get when I did that? Uh, 150. That's the ratio of the masses, right? So I'm going to have to have like 15,000 pounds of ping pong balls uh, in order to get that to happen. So th this thing is accelerating very, very slowly and more and more slowly all the time, the closer it gets up to 100. So um, the, the rocket has to be 150. Uh, the ratio of fuel to rocket has to be 150 in order to get it to go this fast. Um, but anyway, you can do some really interesting uh, rocketry um, uh, questions uh, with the rocket equation. Neat.